Hello everybody, welcome back to Planet X News. This is Scott from the Nibiru channel. A few hours ago, we had a 6.1 magnitude earthquake far off the coast of Alaska in the Aleutian Islands. Actually, it was closer to Russia than it was to the United States. And we also have some space weather for you. We're going to do a space weather report for March 27th, 2017, because once again, we are going to have many issues with the coronal hole that is now facing Earth, and the solar wind speeds have gone up considerably, and we are definitely showing some abnormal activity, activity that we do not want to see. We've also seen an increase in the magnitude of earthquake activity around the world, and there have been several alerts put up for this earthquake activity. Uh, number one would be right off the coast of the state of Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. So you can see this coronal hole has now joined in with the coronal hole that has been constantly at the base of the sun for, well, I'd have to say more than nine months now. We had the same issue back in the summer of 2016, where this large coronal hole encompassed the entire top of the sun. You know, that seems to have healed itself. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are continuing to have these coronal holes open up. And as they turn towards the earth, they seem to get considerably larger. So we're going to go ahead and check out the actual solar wind speed. And it has actually picked up a little bit, not that much. Uh, the solar wind speed will be identified by the purple line that you see cutting across your screen here. And it was very, very low. Oh, about 395 kilometers per second. And as the night and the day has gone through since yesterday and leading up to today, it has actually picked up you know, quite a bit. A little over a million miles per hour. I do expect these solar wind speeds to increase over the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, we're going to look at the actual magnetosphere. This is the Z-cut solar wind velocity. Now, what you're looking at here in the, the color yellow, uh, this is definitely an elevated velocity for the, uh, the solar wind speed. And once again, as I have mentioned before, if you take a look at the length of these arrows, that, that basically signifies that the solar wind speed is increasing. Now, normal, normal uh, when you look at this normally, you'll see this area here where you see my cursor. It will be either in the darker blue or the light blue. Uh, light shades of green, but as you can see, it is picking up into the yellow and the orange. The bow shock is lit up in orange. So we're definitely starting to get battered by the particles of this solar wind. Now, we're actually going to look at the magneto pause, and this is our bow shock right here. This is our protection from the solar radiation and the solar winds. And you can see, if you look at the ends, they are fluctuating and curving inward. And that's kind of a bad sign, ladies and gentlemen. That's, you know, that's definitely not a good sign. And we're only looking at the data that has come in. And this is dated for today, March 27th. Now, they use universal time. So there are several hours ahead of the actual time uh, where you're viewing this now. And right now it is 9.03 a.m. on the east coast of the United States. So I think we are going to be in for a definite rocky ride as far as the earthquake activity and also solar radiation. And we're going to get into that in a few minutes. Now, what you're looking at here is the magnetosphere Y cut. And this is showing you the Earth's magnetic field lines. And, you know, just by looking at this, it is very, very erratic. You can see that the Earth is being hit very hard at this point in time with these solar winds. And this is going to continue. Um, this will probably continue for, I would have to say, at least the next 72 hours, possibly going into a fourth day. As far as radiation levels right now, definitely not looking good. Not looking good at all. 
What you're looking at here, normally, ladies and gentlemen, this area where you see where it's all enveloped in the orange and the red, normally this should be in the color blue or the very light aqua blue, and even in the green area. As you can see, this is very, very elevated, 21.1 Kelvin. Um, basically, this is showing that a lot of solar radiation is coming in and enveloping the entire planet. Uh, sometimes you'll see a clear spot where you see my circle or where you see my cursor. But at this point in time, uh, we are just literally getting battered and enveloped by this solar radiation and these charged particles. It's definitely not good, ladies and gentlemen. It's definitely not good at all. We're going to take a look real quick at the solar wind. This is a model. But what I wanted to show you is if you look down here where my cursor is the small little sphere where you see my my pointer that is the earth now this actually goes out as a prediction model and it goes out several days but if you look at the counter here March 25th 26th and then going into today you will see all of this energy bursting from the Sun here's my cursor there is the Sun right there and the earth is just going to pass through it now that was actually out in front of our planet. So we kind of got a little lucky in that aspect because we could have been directly in line with that and the situation would be, it'd be a lot worse. So you can see we were just basically a little bit behind when all of this energy from the sun came blasting through and we are going to go through it, however, it will have passed somewhat, but it did put us in a higher energy level for the Earth going through. And you'll see right here, and if you look over here, this will actually show you where my cursor is. This will show you how this just passed right over the Earth, but the more intense solar wind is behind us. So that's kind of a good thing, but once again, you know, we are faced with this pretty big corona hole once again this just seems to be non-stop over the past well I'd have to say 18 months now I also want to remind everybody tomorrow at 2 p.m. we're gonna be interviewing and introducing our physicist and she's gonna be going over some information with us a lot of what she has to go over will be pretty technical information and we're going to try to hold some type of a question and answer. So if you have some questions, you'll be able to ask those questions if you are in the live chat. This will be at 2 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow afternoon. So we will definitely, definitely try to get these questions answered. Also, in about an hour from now, I am going to go over two papers that she has submitted very very interesting information on the planet venus and the information on this brown dwarf star so this is scott from planet x news and the nibiru channel thank you for watching stay tuned ladies and gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen as i always say stay updated stay informed and stay tuned if any of you are interested in prepping supplies, emergency food, and water, you can visit one of my associates, foodforliberty.com. Their link is in the description box under the video. Most importantly, make sure that you are subscribed to the Nibiru channel and Planet X News so you can stay updated and informed. And I would also like to thank you for watching and subscribing to our channel. Hello everybody, welcome back to Planet X News. This is Scott from the Nibiru channel. A few hours ago, we had a 6.1 magnitude earthquake far off the coast of Alaska in the Aleutian Islands. Actually, it was closer to Russia than it was to the United States. And we also have some 
space weather for you. We're going to do a space weather report for March 27th, 2017, because once again, we are going to have many issues with the coronal hole that is now facing Earth and the solar wind speeds have gone up considerably and we are definitely showing some abnormal activity, activity that we do not want to see. We've also seen an increase in the magnitude of earthquake activity around the world and 